the, uh, the Spirituality of Jesus, uh, that book, is the best book on that subject ever been written. <laughs> it is the only book on that subject ever been written. I suppose it is also the worst book on that subject ever been written. <laughs> um, I don't know if this means anything to you. Christianity Today I really liked that book. They gave it five stars. My dad says that the spirituality of Paul is better. I keep reminding him he only likes it because it's dedicated to him. <laughs> I'm suddenly realizing I'm saying all these things in public. <laughs> Let's stop that. Hey, welcome back. Good to have you back here. And glad that you stayed after all of that. Here's what I want to do for the next part of our of our time together. Uh, I don't know if this is, is this new for them, for the yeah. Norris lectures? Okay, I know it's new. Work with me, would you please? Okay. What I'd like to do is spend some time processing the things that I've laid out here in, in the lecture. We'll try to do this every morning, but I'll try to adjust it a little bit as we move forward. So rather than just coming and sitting and listening, I'd like for you to now have an opportunity to participate Okay. And I thought rather than do that by just me asking questions, and sometimes that gets dominated by one or two personalities, and the rest of you are like, I have something to say, but I'm afraid to, or I don't want to interrupt, or whatever. So I thought what we do is have you just kind of assemble yourselves in some groups. Okay? Now you're big boys and girls, and so I'm not going to tell you to count off, and you can do that however you want to do. Lots of space in this room, and lots of space up there in the, in the balcony. So what I'd like to do is have you get together just in, in groups and just begin to discuss some of the things. I've got some discussion questions here, and I'll give you a couple of them before we get started, but then from time to time, every five minutes or so, I'll just kind of interrupt and say, hey, you haven't done with that, now I want to discuss this, okay? So let's do that. Um, I, I want you to start the first two or three questions thinking about uh, and sharing with folks how, what was your experience of prayer uh, as you were becoming a Christian, maybe as you were growing up, um, maybe in your, in your history with, with Jesus, was your experience of prayer more fixed forms, or was it more just free-flowing, spontaneous, heartfelt prayers? You know the difference I'm talking about? You know, when I was a kid, I was like, just pray whatever in your heart and mind. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. But um, think about that, discuss that a little bit. Were your prayers growing up more fixed forms? Did you like to pray that way, or was it more free flowing prayers? Uh, and then spend some time talking about what are the dangers and the benefits of praying in fixed forms. Because there's some good things and there's some bad things. Okay? Any of you have Catholic backgrounds? Yes, okay, so you, you get this a little bit more with the rosary. Okay, that's uh, maybe with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the Our Father. So just kind of assemble yourselves in groups. I'll let you decide how big or how small you want them to be. Uh, if you just want to sit and have a conversation with yourself, I suppose that's okay too. You know, uh, there won't be a lot of arguing there, but <laughs> you'll certainly have lots of agreement, I suppose, okay? So go ahead and do that. Spend some time talking about those things, and then I'll pop in in just a few minutes with some more questions. They don't want to interrupt a good discussion that I'm hearing going on. So if when I'm done talking, you want to say, I'm not listening anymore, just continue doing whatever you want to do, that is fine by me, okay? But I thought I'd give you a couple more prompts to uh, fuel your discussion time. Think about, spend some time discussing how our prayers tend to, to drive toward individualism and selfishness. How do your prayers wind up becoming? See, we all have good intentions, okay? So let's not let's not wallow in. Oh, I'm so bad, I'm so bad. But just just think clinically for a bit. How how do my prayers tend to lead toward my own desires? How do they tend to be to, to come out selfishly? And then might maybe you think about how praying memorized and repeated kinds of prayers, like the Great Commandment or the Lord's Prayer, how does that keep me from doing that? Like what is the corrective there? Okay? So spend some time talking about what all your problems are and how you can fix problems. <laughs> okay. But specifically, how, how do when we pray, how does it if we're left to our own devices without the teaching of the Lord Jesus and Moses and the prophets and the apostles, how does our prayers how do our prayers degenerate into selfish kinds of things? And then how how do we prevent that? Good. <laughs> 
last thing that I'd like you to do today, just the last real quick question, then we're going to be done for today. I want you to just kind of share what your takeaways are for today. One of my good friends, uh, Twyla Sias, who teaches on the campus of Johnson University, Florida, just recently retired. She always does this with her students. She's an education professor, and she's very, very good. And at the end, she goes, look, what, what are you taking away? What's the big takeaway thing from today? Okay. So just think about that. Maybe just one thing. Maybe just a couple things. Just with that one thing that you're going to walk away and say, you know, I'm glad I was there today because this is what I picked up. Okay. Just that real quick. 